What is up guys, Pie Muffin here, and we are back with our SAO Rising Steel video. Today, there's nothing new to talk about, but I wanted to make this video for a little bit, especially with all the stuff going on. Uh, I just want to talk about the gotcha system and kind of my issues with it and how I think they could improve it. I'm honestly not expecting them to because the issues I have with the gotcha system in this game are the same issues I have with Memory Defrag. And Memory Defrag has done nothing to kind of remedy those issues. So I'm really not expecting things to get fixed here. But I still thought I'd put my thoughts out there. And you all can definitely let me know down below your thoughts on what you think can be improved. If you agree with what I'm saying and whatnot whatsoever. So first thing I want to talk about is the Limit Break system. I have always been... Uh, vocal about the fact that I don't like limit break systems like in this game as much as I love this game you know the character arts the the gameplay style the limit break system is my least favorite part of the game because in most gacha games out there except for you know a small minority being able to limit break your character to their max potential is something that is normally free to play you know you play a game like uh Dragon Ball Dokkan um, you play a game like Dragon Ball Legends, you play a game like Seven Deadly Sins, you play uh, how Tales of Crestoria is going to be. The limit breaking a character's level to the max number is always something you can farm in a free-to-play fashion. Now, yes, in this game there are options to free-to-play um, crystals, such as, you know, every Ordinal Battle, we get a hundred of those rainbow limit break crystals, which you can use on any element. But that's one limit break every month that you get from that. Um, at first, I wasn't so worried because, you know, in the first few months of the game, they made it so we could actually obtain... Uh, where is it? Um, these. We, the first few events that we had had these gemstones in the event shop to exchange. But after the first like couple events, they made it completely just purchasable. Like, it's literally just you have to buy the packs with these gemstones, and that's how you get them there. So I'm not a fan of that. I think if you're going to refill this shop every month, then all five, you know, the six colored elements, you should be able to, through free-to-play means, be able to get those. So I'm not a fan of that. So it very heavily limits uh, players from being able to complete content, especially when the content is harder in terms of a free-to-play sense. This game is definitely more on the side of benefiting those who spend money, um, you know, just to kind of show what I'm talking about, if you go to the store, as you can see, these gemstones only come with these $21 packs, which, you know, overall isn't a horrible thing, uh, you know, for, you know, someone who can afford it, but it, I still am not a fan of it. And my first thing that I would like to say that I would have preferred if, they, if this isn't going to change what I'm about to say, because it's fundament it would fundamentally change the entire game. But how I would have liked to have seen this gacha game work is if the limit breaks were just used for your, uh, in, where is it, um, your incarnate. So, um, you know, maybe have your incarnate, which for Kirito is enhanced armament, which I have a three out of three because he's fully limit broken. Um, I would have liked if, you know, because you need four dupes to essentially max out a uh, four star. So instead of doing this, maybe have five, uh, you know, have it be one out of five when you first pull the unit for the uh, enhanced armament or whatever their super is going to be, their incarnate. And just make it so you need four dupes in order to make it go to its max power. But I'm just not a fan of locking levels behind stuff. Like all these units down here that I have at level 80 that I don't have... Uh, a way to kind of awaken they're not really that useful you know most of these units get useful once they're actually max level but before that you know they're okay for you know side stuff but for the most part you're not going to be using them for the harder content so i'm not a fan of that uh whatsoever um so one thing i'd really like to see moving forward is and by the way you know they are being even stingier with each event when it comes to uh, crystals, you know, every two or three events we'll get, like, uh, in the shop, you know, there'll be, like, uh, let's see, did the ISKCON banner, e or the ISKCON event even have it? Let's scroll down and see what the stuff I exchanged. You know, this event should have uh, fire crystals. 
Yeah, they, they gave out... Well, I, there was probably like 50 you were able to get from this, which is half of one limit break. So it's one of those things where, like, yes, you know, the game needs to make money, but it's SAO. It's going to make money regardless. So I feel like the limit break system could have been a lot more generous so that players can actually, you know, put in the hard work to actually limit break your characters. Because at this point, no amount of hard work is going to let you have a full set of uh, max level characters. It's just not, it's based on luck and it's based on time. You know, I, I, a lot of these units, I'll probably never max limit break because I'm going to pull stuff that's better as time goes on. So a lot of these units I just pulled for no reason and they're just not something I'm going to end up using. And, you know, obviously I have plenty of level 100s, but, you know, the if I hadn't spent a single penny on this game, I'm sure this list of level 100s would be half as big as it is. So it's really not the kind of... And the new stuff that they're doing isn't benefiting um, free-to-play players at all. Like, they just... The exchange system they just added with the six-month anniversary banner, which basically, if you summon enough, you basically get a... It pities you, so there's a pity system... So, if you get 300 exchange points on a single banner, not just overall, on one single banner during the time it's around. So, this banner, for example, goes away on the 8th. So, if you do a basically 28 multis in the course of the next two weeks, then you basically get to choose one of the two units to uh, exchange for. Which, I I've never been a fan of a system like that. I, I would have much preferred if they did a pity system where the points stay. So I would have loved if, you know, like right here, I have 22 points exchanged because I've done the first two steps on this banner. By the end of this, I'll probably have like 55, 66 points because I'm probably just going to finish off the rotation for this. And I might do the rate ups for, I might, I might do the rate up for uh, Sugu uh, to see if I get lucky with that. So I'd have like 66 points there. I would have loved if that just carries over then the next banner, maybe I do five steps and adds up. So then, you know, two, three months down the line, I'll be able to exchange for one unit that I want. And that doesn't seem too ridiculous. I think that seems pretty fair. So the, this kind of system, I feel, is very, very greedy. And I don't agree with it at all. Because how many people do you know, except for people who really wail on this game and are extremely unlucky, are actually going to do 28 multis? Especially on a banner like this, where the rate up is so high, I find it very hard to believe that many people are going to even make it to the pity rate. Like, I, this isn't the kind of game where it's going to take that many multis for most people to walk away with one of the two units. And it, unlike other gacha games that require specific character dupes, this game does not. So if someone pulls, you know, within six, seven multis, both units, they don't have to pull anymore. You know, why, why would they have to go to the pity rate? So, yes, there will be those cases where some people might get extremely unlucky, but I feel like it's a very low chance that someone will not walk away with Sugu or Sinon within uh, 28 multis. So, I feel like this pity system is not good, and I hope that they realize that and change it so it's an overall pity system. So, like, if I'm waiting for, like, for example, everyone knows I'm waiting for a four-star climb. So, I would love to be able to save these exchange points over time and you know six seven months down the road if he ever gets a four star i'd be able to just i'd be like okay i have these points i get this one singular unit it doesn't get me all his limit breaks um i feel like that's just it's just a little too greedy on their part for that um let's see i think there was something else in the banner itself i wanted to oh and i guess um I don't think it takes the play. So I could be wrong about this. Until I actually pull a dupe, I won't be able to really check this. But um, now apparently when you pull a dupe from banners moving forward, you get Imaginarium from uh, from dupes. So I assume you get the Limit Break Crystals and the Imaginarium. So Imaginarium is another thing people are going to have to be worried about uh, getting. Um, so you would need to exchange for a lot of this. Um, which this is going to be very hard to kind of, I guess, get with the items that you're going to need for that, which that's more dupes you, you have to pull there um, to make your character even better. This is just another reason for uh, dupes to kind of be a thing. Um, so that they're basically making it. So, so I would love if they somehow redefine how the 
limit breaking system works like I'm, i'd be fine with this because this is like overall stat boosts you know you start with incarnate increase and stuff like this i don't mind you know this being a dupes thing like you need to pull the specific dupe of a specific character in order to uh to essentially get these but what i what i would much prefer is if they just revamp the or e they don't even have to revamp it just start being more friendly with the with the limit breaking currency you know make every event have more currency um make these stupid uh item shop make these gemstones farmable like even if they just made it so you can get all a hundred of each color each month like that would be a hundred times better and I, I would complain a lot less but the, it's the the more that they add the more they're basically saying hey all these additions we're adding are benefiting the people who spend money on our, which I get, you know, it's a gotcha game, but not everyone who plays your game, you know, can drop hundreds and hundreds of dollars on your game. And it's, it kind of sucks because those, especially when you're going to put PVP and stuff like, like when you have stuff like Ordinal or you have stuff like these ranking events, you can't only be thinking of your paid player base because not everyone is going to be lucky and or fortunate, especially in a time like this, fortunate enough to be able to drop as much money as everyone else so you have to make the content at least doable for your free-to-play player base as well because let's be honest you know i would say i want to say probably 40 percent of the people who play this game are probably paid players and the other 60 percent are just people who don't spend money on the game so while it is important to give incentives for your people who can spend money, I feel like it's also important to put incentives for people who can't spend money. So I would really like to see some more free-to-play options for kind of limit breaking stuff. I'm fine with the Imaginarium being dupes. You know, moving forward, every time you pull a dupe for a character, you're going to get one of those Imaginariums you can exchange for that. Um, but then I'd, I'd love to see ways to be able to limit break stuff even better. Like, if there was just an easier way to free-to-play limit break all my characters, I, I would have no complaints. If I could get all these characters you see on this screen to 100 and, you know, not have to feel like I have to spend a ton of money to get crystals, then I would feel much better about everything. But that's more or less everything I want to say on the matter. I'm very curious to see what other people think um, about the matter. You know, whether you're paid or free-to-play, I'm sure... Uh, a lot of people can agree it does kind of suck, you know, getting level 80 units and just them not being useful in any sense of the uh, word. Like, like, even just, like, for example, my uh, my Asuna, the wind one here, I almost never use her for anything because she's really not that good without limit breaks. And right now, I just don't feel like limit breaking. I only have 146 wind crystals, and then if you add the rainbow ones I have, I could possibly get her to level 90 if I cared enough. But... It, there's just no point until I actually can get someone to 100, and by the time I would use them on this Asuna, I'm probably going to pull a better wind unit that serves her purpose even better, so I don't know. I, I, I'm just not a fan of the limit break system here, so I would like to see some improvements, but like I said, let me know what you guys think down below. Don't forget to subscribe for more if you're new to the channel. I'll see you all next time. Have a wonderful day, everyone.